Hey guys, Gaming Off The Grid here, and we just got ourselves a new video game. Today we're going to be playing and reviewing the Sega Genesis Classics for PS4. We just picked this up, we've been playing it all morning. Some great thoughts and feedback on this game, we're going to let you know if it's worth your purchase and worth your time to sit down and play. What are we drinking today? Today we're drinking the Beatnik Sour by Exile. A Des Moines based brewery, they have an incredible portfolio and a very interesting selection of sours. We haven't reviewed a sour yet on this channel, so I'm very excited. We're also very excited about this game and to share our thoughts. So sit back, pour yourself a beer if you care to, and stay tuned for this episode of Gaming Off The Grid. Here we go, Sega Genesis Classics. What the heck is this? Oh, it's a throwback to the Sega 16-bit era. It's a collection of 50 titles, and it was only 30 bucks. 50 games for 30 bucks, and they've added uh, multiplayer to the... The two-player games. The two-player games, yeah. yeah. And that, in itself, might be worth the price of admission. It's it, really cool. It's really sweet. Yeah, so everything's all packed on one disc. The thing when you came over this morning, because you've been playing it throughout the night, early into the morning, uh, you brought up the main menu. Yeah, it was sweet. When I plugged it in, it started with like a title video thing, and it had all the characters, and I thought that was really sweet. And then when the main menu came in, it was like a 90s kid's bedroom. And I was like, this is freaking sweet. There's like a tube TV in the corner. There's a super soaker. There's like trash on the floor. All the games are like on a game shelf. Yeah. It's just super sweet. It's really, really cool. They did such a good job. It's just like a nostalgia trip, right, when you go in there. And the games, it's really cool. The spines are all facing out, similar to a shelf like this. And when you cycle over a game, it kind of pulls the game out a little bit. And then when you select it, the cartridge pops out and it goes into the Sega Genesis, which is under the TV, and bam, it turns on. So it's really, really neat. It's just something you have to see. And then I thought it was really cool. For whatever reason, you started messing with the clock. Yeah, and it was changing the time of day, so like the sun was shining through the window, and then it was nighttime. And yeah. It was super cool. They just did a really, really, really cool job with that. Um, and with that being said, another thing they did right, I feel like, is they included a two-sided poster. And why is that a big deal? Well, I'll tell you why it's a big deal. <laughs> Modern games don't come with instruction manuals at all. So you pay 60 bucks, there's nothing on the inside of the game, and it's I've always just felt like that they're, they're shorting us, they're cutting corners in some way, because I have kept all my instruction manuals, and I look back at it, it's like an art piece, it helps me remember the time. There was a time when games came with posters inside to promote other games, and you just felt like you were getting a little something extra. Back from the days when you bought a pair of shoes and there was a sticker in the box or a keychain in the box where people just were saying, thank you for spending your money with us. And then Sega did it with this collection. <laughs> they brought it back. Yes, I've bought other collections that have nothing inside and it's something little and for most people it probably doesn't matter. But I think it was really, really important and it showed me that they took this very serious. Yeah, and they care. Yeah, and that's the most important thing. There's a couple other things they added. What are some additional well, things? Well, they added um, a save state, which is pretty cool because some games back then didn't have them, so now you can save and go back, which is really cool. Um, they added a, re a rewind and a fast forward feature, which is kind of funny because you can be in a game and like say you die, you can rewind back before you died and not make that mistake again. I don't think you can do that online. I think it's just in single player mode, but it's still kind of sweet. It is really neat. Uh, the fast forward is kind of cool too you know that we were playing some of the JRPGs the fantasy star games and you were going through the text just so we could get in and plow through <laughs> some of the game um, and it's cool because there's uh, the lines from like a VHS or a VCR yeah it looks like it's retro 90s it's so sweet yeah it's just a really cool uh, throwback and a good nostalgia trip for sure tons of titles on this game you mentioned there's 50 what are some that jumped out to you that you think make this a hands-down purchase for well obviously the Sonic games um, it comes with one two 3D Blast and Spin Ball, which is super cool. It doesn't come with uh, Sonic 3 or... Sonic and Knuckles. Sonic yes. and Knuckles. Yep. Those, I, I don't quite know why they didn't make the list, but Sonic 2 is so good. Uh, spin Ball has always been a favorite of mine. It's just the, arc or, uh, the arcade pinball element of it. It's really fun. It's a unique game. I think the game is worth purchasing, if nothing else, to be able to play Streets of Rage 1, 2, and 3 online. Yeah, that's so sweet. One of the best couch co-op games that there is, and you get all three of them, and you can sit down and play them together 
or you can play them online, which is really, really cool. It is worth mentioning there were some stability issues when we tried playing online this morning. We weren't able to get a super good connection, um, but that could be early. I mean, there's not a ton of people on it right now. The game just came out this morning. There was another game you played that you were way into. I started playing this game called Gunstar Heroes, and that game blew my mind. It's like an arcade style game, and you pick your character and your weapon, and I picked like a flamethrower and I was just flying through like lighting things on fire it was so much fun it's a fantastic title and it's uh, definitely one uh, if you haven't played it you should go back and visit Altered Beast we played that a bunch on the PS3 version of this collection that yep. came out a while ago and that game is just fun in general yeah it's way fun I'll never get sick of every single boss fight they had going welcome to your doom <laughs> welcome to your doom it just makes me very, very happy. Um, he's got to have one of the best video game voices of all time. I've always been a pretty big fan of Kid Chameleon. I had a neighbor that had that growing up. Um, it's just a really fun platformer. We played that a little bit. And then I'm always into ninja games. So the Shinobi 3 and Revenge of Shinobi is really cool. Yeah, it's really sweet. So those are always fun. Just a fistful of games there uh, that we think hold up very, very well today and are worth a playthrough for sure. So what do you think? It's hard to review a collection because there's 50 games. Yeah, but as, as a whole, you know, if you had to give this a, just a score as a project, um, not considering individual games. I think overall I would give it four and a quarter. I think that's a good score. Okay. Um, the graphics are good, the sound's pretty good. Genesis never had as good a sound as, as uh, the Super Nintendo, I believe it was mono, at least the, the original one was. So some of those games, like the sound just spikes a little bit, I feel like, at certain um, points of the game. And as far as the controls go, I think that they have always had an issue, at least in my opinion, mapping that three button Genesis controller over to different devices, whether it be an emulating machine or over to a PS4 controller or any modern controller really. It just always doesn't feel quite right to me. And that's coming from someone who's fairly familiar with the original controller. Small gripes for a great project, but they are things that I think are important to talk about. But overall, great. Yeah, really great. The replay value is phenomenal. There's 50 games, so you can get on and play one game for a couple of days and then get on and play another game for a couple of days. You can play this game for years. Yep. Like, and I think it's a great thing to add, especially if you're just um, a modest game collector. Like you're not super big on having every single thing that ever existed. I know for myself, I like having the things that I remember playing growing up. And there's only a fistful of games I'm really uh, tied to from the Genesis era. But if I can get all the games that I didn't play for 29 bucks, that's it's yeah. great. Um, so I think if you're a, a modern gamer, um, just wanting to dabble in a little bit of retro gaming, um, I think this is a great step. And I think even if you have a great Genesis collection, getting the online functionality is probably worth it for you just to pick this title up. Right? Yeah, and you're not putting wear and tear on your old hardware and stuff, which yep. is always nice. Yes, I, I am always aware of that because some of this stuff, you know, eventually it's not going to be that easy to find. It's already starting to get that way for yeah. sure. So what did you think of the beer? Oh, it's very good. Uh, it's a sour, so it's a very unique beer style. It's a tough one to explain to somebody. Yeah, um, it has definitely a tart and acidic taste. Very tarty. Yeah, it is uh, very unique. I love Exile Brewery's um, sour beers. They uh, are real close to us here, uh, right in the Midwest. They have a really unique thing going, and they're, I don't know what it is. I don't, th I don't think this is a filtered beer, and uh, it just has a thicker mouthfeel than a lot of the sours I've come across. And it's just a unique flavor, and I can't compare it to any sour that I've ever tried. I feel like they're definitely onto something, and I think that uh, there is a little bit of a, of a niche sour movement kind of in the craft beer yeah. scene. And I think they're uh, positioning themselves well to be a big player in that. So if you're ever in the Midwest, or if you live in the Midwest, I think you need to try this one, the Beatnik Sour. They've got a litany of other ones, uh, different flavors and stuff that are really good as well, so you should check it out. But it definitely is a good summer drinking beer and a great beer to pair with gaming. So that's what we thought about this collection. What did you think of the collection? Uh, what, are, what are some of your favorite games? What are some of your favorite games that did make the list? That'd be really sweet to know. Absolutely. Um, I think uh, we can give this a full-on recommendation. Try getting your hands on this. It's a, it's a great value for $29.99. Um, catch us next time. We always appreciate you tuning in. Hit the subscribe button. Like the video if you care to. We, will, uh, we appreciate any and all support. We're just getting this channel off the ground. And we appreciate uh, you tuning in to watch this episode. We'll catch you next time on the next episode of Gaming Off the Grid. Yes, four. Very, very, very. <laughs> fuck. <laughs> what are we drinking today? They were drinking a, a beer. <laughs> what are we drinking?
What are you drinking today is what I want to know. Huh? I'm open the box. See what's inside. <laughs> hey guys, Gaming Off the Grid here, and we just got ourselves a new video game. We're not going to tell you what it is. Hey guys! Ah, <laughs> oh, Jesus. And let you know, is this worth your time and your purchase? So, here it is. 